Uh, next up was most comprehensive. Do we have Taylor or Laura in the room? Yeah, we're good. All right. You guys want to talk about your entry? <laughs> well, wait. I'll, I'll I'll jump in. But we uh, obviously there was a fair amount of data that we we uh, released to the public, and different people took different pieces of it and didn't you know and kind of focused in. This was the one. This entry was actually the one that kind of had the most breadth and the amount of data that they uh, presented, but still um, was straightforward and clear and. Also, if I remember correctly, really cool to look at. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Do you mind seeing what we added to it? Yeah. <coughs> um, so, Taylor, among other things, is a programmer, and I'm an architect. So, for us, I think it was interesting to try to find a way to make a, a map of the city. Um, and use the data from Divi as a way to create that, that visualization. So not just visualizing the data itself. But most interesting to us is that the city would emerge from the data without actually mapping the data onto the city. So um, the central piece is this histogram that organizes, um, breaks down the trips by time of day and by neighborhood. Um, so the neighborhoods are north to south, and you can read the density of the city in the travel to certain neighborhoods, um, which you know we then embellished with more with more information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I, uh, the, there's an arc plot on the right. If that's not recognizable, that the um, the height of the arcs are uh, represent the volume of traffic between neighborhoods. Um, and so they're, they're mostly just showing the, the major paths uh, between neighborhoods on that side. And then for those who can't see on the left, um, that's the, the sort of line chart is the total number of trips per day. Um, and in closer detail, you can distinguish the weekends from the weekdays. Uh, that was something that was particularly notable, we thought, to see um, the trend line. Again, this is all sort of hard to see, but the trend line is tracking the temperature. And you can see a point, for example, where weekends become relatively less popular than weekdays uh, as it gets colder, which seems to be commuters sort of sticking it out. Um, and then, yeah, and then these two uh, sort of flat histograms on both sides of the uh, city 3D thing uh, are weekends and weekdays breaking down subscribers and just day pass customers. So the customers obviously dominate weekend usage and, and the subscribers. You can read the um, morning rush hour and evening rush hour trends in the histogram pretty easily. Um, and uh, the one interesting piece of information we sort of capped our city with was the rebalancing of the Dimmy bikes, which is a huge percentage of the actual trips that have been taken. Um, so it's about 750,000 total trips. and. Yeah, about 150,000 rebalancing. Rebalanced bikes. What happens when they rebalance? They put it in the van and use gas and take it to a new station. And why do they do that? Because uh, it's actually really, the pattern is like really schizophrenic. Um, they, <laughs> like, so during the day, for example, the city, uh, the downtown, <coughs> gets, there's a more intense, there appears to be a more intense demand for tourist traffic, but a lot of the people take the bikes back to the same station. And as you can see here, the, the commuting pattern out of the out of the central business district is busier in the in the late afternoon. And so during the day, they're constantly driving bikes around across the loop and bringing bikes into the loop to satisfy the tourists. And then, particularly in the in during afternoon rush hour, they're just clearly furiously like driving to stations where people get off a bike and just like throwing it in the van and taking it back to the loop. Um, I mean, it averages out to over a thousand bikes a day. Uh, that they're doing this with. How did you find that? Um, was that in, did you find that in the data set that Divi released? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they wanted to emphasize it, but uh, they, the bikes have serial numbers, and so you can look at the records and see if you sort them by time, you can see where it was dropped off and where it started again, and we found this many breaks in the continuity. 
So you mean like a trip that a person couldn't have taken? or? Well, it's like it was dropped off at station A, and the next time it's in the system, it was departing from station B. Okay, so the bike's just finished. There's another trip longing for him, they run it to the station? Correct. All right. Vanished. Well, <laughs> 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 somewhere other than where they went. <laughs> what did you use to make that graphic? Oh, sorry. Uh, it was a. Uh, so, well, so Taylor generated um, all the, the the graphs in Mathematica, which you can get um, vector graphics and 3D uh, 3D <coughs> graphics out of, and then I um, modeled them in Rhino in 3D. And um, rendered it in Illustrator. What's Rhino? Rhinoceros is a 3D modeling program. It's mostly used by uh, architects and product designers, um, but it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love the look. The like weird 50s textbook. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I have a personal interest in trying not to use obvious uh, indicators to like separate information like um, color or uh, icons. I think it, like the data graphics tend to be, start to look a lot the same and get overrun by things that are familiar. And I think that there are ways that people can understand information without just relying on like what has been used before, I guess. Um, so it's just like a self-imposed challenge I do often to like render things only in black and white and still try to have uh, gradation and um, contrast. I had a question about um, how, because there's a lot, a lot going on. It's most comprehensive, which is you know fitting. But I'm wondering, what were some techniques you used to make sure that the data wasn't overwhelming? Um, I think well, the first thing was to sort of decide what our central story was, which is the, the 3D histogram. And then, uh, do you mean overwhelming in term for us, or in, in, in terms of how it was presented? In terms of how, I mean, this is still a lot of information, and I'm a little bit overwhelmed. But I was just wondering how you kind of took into account the user experience. Yeah, you know, I think we did want it to read at different levels. I think we wanted it to have a graphic impact sort of as a whole, which is what the ness of the histogram achieves. But then. The more time you spend on it, the more you can get out of it. So sure. we were interested in like you get out of it what you put into it to some extent. Oh, okay. um, but I think yeah, the hierarchy of the information and having everything like support the broader idea, which is just Chicago on the lake. Um, can you move the graphic at all, or like zoom in, or I guess you can zoom. No, you can no. zoom in. Okay. Okay. So at the step, you can. What is yeah, I have, uh, yeah, I have it in the in a state where you could zoom around but not rapidly present it this way. And then you kind of make a flat version of it. Right. A 2D version, then you make that one look really good. Yeah, and you can get flat 2D vector graphics out of a 3D view. All right, any other questions? All right, thanks very much. That was cool. Um,